Yeah, good evening, everyone. Switch on again. So let's start off. What is the answer for this guy? Did everyone try this? Forgot. Yes. What is sir? You forgot. No, sir. Tried but didn't work. <clears throat> Other scans on. See, so the thing here is the whole thing is X. Agreed? The whole thing is X. Now, what you're doing when you cut it here, this whole thing <clears throat> looks like X, but there's only one difference. In place of C, you have KC, isn't it? Are you getting? In place of C, you are having KC. So, can I say like this? So, let C A B B equal to X. If you cut this at this point, let's call this point one and point two. Then C one two shouldn't be K times X. You're simply replacing C with KC, isn't it? If everything is increasing by a factor of K, won't the final resistance also increase by a factor of K? Is that making sense? Because for one and two, we replace C with KC. Therefore, the final, <clears throat> the resultant also should be K times the initial. Therefore, the resultant should be K times CAB, which is nothing but KX. Is that making sense? Everyone, do you agree with that logic? Vrinda, Amu, Asni, Reina, Gauri, clear with that logic? Because think about it. C ka place we have KC. KC ka place we have K square C. So you just replace C with KC. That means the final answer in place of X will have KX. So this whole circuit can be replaced with C, C, this will be KX. What is the equivalent? C plus KX, those two are in parallel, into C by C plus KX plus C should be equal to X again. Check it out. <clears throat> you get a quadratic from here. C square plus KXC is equal to 2CX plus KX square. Solve from here, you get X ka answer. I'll leave it to you. Please check. All clear this? Any doubts on this? Please ask me. Got the idea? <clears throat> Next one. Pritam, come on. How do you do this thing? All or C. So like I said yesterday, there are five ways you can solve. Series parallel, Wheatstone bridge, nodal analysis, symmetries, and Kirchhoff's law. So we have done nodal analysis, this thing, uh, series parallel and Wheatstone's. Now we are entering symmetries. How do you approach this? Think for a moment, then I'll teach you something. Then from there we can go ahead.
now <clears throat> these kind of circuits now listen there is a technique actually which you have to use and but if you look at the circuit can you see there is nothing in series nothing in parallel there is no wheatstone bridge nodal analysis you can't use i mean there's nothing you can do here because generally to use nodal analysis few points should have same potential isn't it so here nothing looks like that symmetrical circuits the first symmetry we have is called perpendicular bisector symmetry you also call it equatorial symmetry you can call it whatever you want meaning i just named it that way how does the symmetry look like <clears throat> if you have the two terminals a and b and if the line of symmetry is passing through the center each side is a mirror image of the other side So in this case, A and B are terminals of the battery. Means you are going to connect the battery between A and B. So the circuit rate should look symmetrical about these two points. Example, the one which I showed you right now, that was a symmetrical thing. this is point a this is point b isn't this the line of symmetry the left and right look identical like a mirror image if i take little more little extreme let's say each segment is a capacitor if you see this is the line of symmetry uh, didn't take it properly but you got the point i didn't draw it properly <clears throat> so the battery is between these two points so these kind of symmetries are called perpendicular bisector symmetry basically there is a perpendicular bisector between a and b or equatorial symmetry <clears throat> so when you get circuit like this what happens let me write as an expression but have a look at this mm, i think that's the answer brinda but let's see <clears throat> what happens right since that line is a line of symmetry it is equi distant from both the sides <clears throat> this is the first thing that will happen the bisector would be equipotential because exactly it is in the middle point the bisector would be equipotential that is all nodes on that line have same potential <laughs> therefore <clears throat> if you have same potential any element connected between these points can be removed any element between these nodes can be removed that is the first property you have <clears throat> second the nodes can be opened up along the symmetrical line nodes along the symmetrical line <clears throat> can be opened along the line 
what do you mean by that? So this example, Now, because this is the symmetrical line on the left and right, everything should look identical. So if you say charge Q1 flows here, charge Q1 should flow here, mirror image. If you say Q2 flows here, then this should be Q2, mirror image. So that means this point intersection, this node, I can open it like this. I can disconnect it like this. Now you tell me <clears throat> if this Q1 is flowing here, this Q1 will flow here. This Q2 is flowing here, so this Q2 will flow here. By removing that node, did you affect the charge distribution? So all that nodes along that line can be opened up. So it won't affect the problem. Now, if I open this, doesn't this look easy to solve now? Series parallel? These two became series. These two series, this is parallel, series, and parallel. Are you getting this? So opening the node won't affect the chart distribution. Opening the node does not affect the charge flow. So you can open the node. It doesn't mean that the node is there or not there. It doesn't make sense. Does not affect the flow. Let me take a little <clears throat> more this thing. So this example which I draw now. Remember each segment is a wire. So this is the line of symmetry. So you can open up the nodes along the line, meaning this guy will become Like this. You're getting this? So these nodes can be opened up along the line. So this and this can be opened up. Can you see how the circuit becomes? This is the meaning of opening the nodes along the line joining. Have a look at this example. So you can just open up anything like this. So once you do this, your life actually becomes easy in this problem. You can open up this node. This circuit simply becomes. This way. How much is this? That is CC C by three. And this is C by two. So C A B is five C by six. Easy. Just please go through this example and read the statement. Try to understand what it is. Ask me if you're confused. Can be opened along horizontal. No, it can't do will you open horizontally, right? <clears throat> it's got, there is another symmetry, actual symmetry. I'll show you that. You can't open up like that. I'll show you. You, you can see this thing. Na? There's actually one more symmetry if you observe. This is also symmetry. Na? That is another symmetry. That is called axial symmetry. We'll see what, what does that do. But first understand bisector symmetry. So that square thing which I draw is a case where you had multiple symmetries. <laughs> Do check, have a look at this thing.
clear in the next one axial symmetry so could you show that answer wala page this one sir in which you solved sir Yes, sir. So, in axial symmetry, if A and B are the terminals, the symmetry line passes through A and B. So. the above and below the either side of the line they look identical <clears throat> so basically either side of the line are parallel to each other because there is same potential difference and the circuit can be folded over itself so so i can symmetrically So in this case, now the symmetrical line passes through A and B. I'll show an example. So what you can do, the circuits can be overlapped in parallel and can be overlapped. Uh, let me show you what it means. For example, someone gives you a circuit like this. Actually, the same thing we just showed you, double of this. So, in this circuit, if you see now, this is your axial symmetry. If you look at this capacitor, this capacitor and this capacitor, they're identical, isn't it? This capacitor and this capacitor are identical. One capacitor is missing on the left. Uh, so if you fold the circuit on top of each other this guy becomes like this the center two capacitors will look normal where uh, let's say all these are c C C C all these are C. If two capacitors are in parallel, what will happen to the equivalent? This will remain C. This will remain C. But this guy will become two C, two C, two C, two C, two C, and two C. Is that making sense? So if you keep a capacitor on top of itself, both are in parallel. What will happen to the equivalent capacitance? Two C, na? But this capacitor, if you see, there is no one overlapping on itself, isn't it? There's no one overlapping in it, so that will remain C. उसके बाद क्या करना था? There is also an axial symmetry, ना? No? Perpendicular symmetry. This node can be opened up, and you can solve the circuit. Is this making sense? So one doubt. Hmm. So, but in this we can also see that there's a bisector symmetry as well. Actually, I mean, you could if... you could have opened up here also. I know. Well, just to give an example, you could do that, right? Well, you could have just opened up here only. That also would have worked. Pick okay. up. So using these two symmetries, let's try to solve one. You try, and then I'll show you. Let's solve this thing. Each segment is a capacitor. Huh? 
I'm lazy to draw, but it looks like this. Getting how the capacitors are? What is the equivalent of this? Try. I'll give two, three minutes. Try to figure it out and then I'll show you how to do Actual symmetry page. Hmm. So basically, circuits you can fold across itself if there's an actual symmetry. If it's a perpendicular symmetry, you can remove all the nodes along that line. These are the main two things which you get from these two symmetries. Sir, in this also you told we can open. That will become perpendicular symmetry. That. The one which I gave you, there's a both the symmetries are there in this. Okay. Practically, uh, the the uh, order that we use the symmetries and won't make the difference in the it final. It won't make result. a difference. It won't make a difference. You can take any order. Ah, more done. Where are you? So can you show the diagram? Yeah, yeah. There, appreciate the diagram, one of my best circuit. How do you solve? I'll give you one for homework later and I'll show you how that looks. You'll get more deadly one. This is a resistor circuit, but uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> this I'll leave it as a homework for you to try. These are resistors. So, but idea is the same. And I think it's the answer 13 R by 20, I guess. I guess I don't remember. <clears throat> try this, try this. Three minutes, give it a try. So, <clears throat> first thing, huh? you can open up the nodes or you can just fold them. So, this is your axial symmetry. So, when you fold this, this thing looks like It looks like this, no? This was A and this was B. And what happened to all the capacitors? Double. Everyone became double, right? Everyone became double. 2C. 
2c 2c you see all doubled basically then there is also this symmetry now so this node also can be opened up Agreed. So if you look at this thing now, so we have one capacitor here, capacitor here, capacitor, 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 one, two, three, four. These four capacitors are in series, right? This is a capacitor, capacitor, and capacitor. I'll just try to redraw the circuit. See, so A. And B, so this is one capacitor. We have four capacitors in line like this. This is one. This branch I draw, upper branch. And then you have to say there's one more capacitor. This you can solve. Sub series parallel, man. What is the answer? Seven C by six. I was not expecting such a beautiful answer. And remember, all are two Cs here. Try again. I don't think seven C by six. It's not chance. Nee aayega unna. Somewhere you must have. Five C by twelve near. Seven you will get, but six and twelve you get something like thirteen or seventeen something. You get a weird prime number. That much I remember. How much is this? Two C, two C, C, two C, two C, C, C and C will be again two C, two C, two C and two C. That will be two C by three. This whole section was two C by three. And this whole section on the top is two C by four, so C by two. C by two and two C by three are in parallel, so R plus two by three, three plus four, so seven by six. Then that and these two are in this thing again. So C by two by seven by six plus R, seven by twelve, multiply three. Ten by twelve, seven C by ten. I'm getting. Yeah, two C, two C, C, na. That will be C plus one, thirteen. Seven C by thirteen. You guys can check and verify. The whole circuit becomes simply series parallel, which is a manageable circuit to solve. Please check. Yeah, right, Harsh. Seven C by thirteen. That is how you solve a square cut grid. You use axial symmetry and bisector symmetry both together at the same time. It becomes pretty a circuit which you can manageable. Please check it out. Ask me if you are confused. It's a pretty good one. Can you solve it? I'm getting seven C by six. Check it out. All capacitors are two C. Did you take that into account? All are two C actually, or assume all are C and solve and end may put C ka place mein two C. Assume just all are C, solve it, end may just replace C with two C. You should get the same answer. Check check because I got the same. Harsh also got the same. And I remember there's a thirteen. I don't know the exact one, but others please check the circuit. This is the most important thing. If you got till here, I think job is done. After that, it is series parallel. You can handle it.
and I'm getting a six in the denominator. You guys are goofing up somewhere too, sir. I guess check it out anyways. I'll leave it to you. That much you can handle it, Tom. Seven C was certainly right. Next one. Star. This is A and this is B. Each segment is again a capacitor. Find C A B. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> so here, if you see, there's a symmetry. So if you look at here, left and right are identical. So if you observe this point and this point, don't they have same potential? There's the mirror images, right? These two points have same potential. If you call them one and two, one and two are symmetrical. Because whatever happens on the left, same thing happens on the right. Similarly, three and four are also symmetrical. That means anything between one and two and three and four can be removed. So your circuit will become like this. This guy in the middle can be removed. And now you are done actually. If you observe this and this are in what? series 
how much c by 2 this is a c so this whole branch will be how much 3c by, by 2 similarly this whole triangle will be 3c by 2 this branch is c and this branch is c so i can just draw the circuit like this there are four capacitors in a line c 3c by 2 3c by 2 and c and four capacitors in line C, 3C by 2, 3C by 2, and C. check. Series and parallel, you are done. How much is this? That is C, C by 2. This is 3C by 4 by 5C by 4. That is 3C by 8, 5C by 4, 4 to 3C by 10, 3C by 10, both are parallel, 3C by 5. Check your answer to the C by 4, how did you get there? So basically that each triangle will be 3C by 2. Please check the logic here. So we could just double it right at the start after removing ah, the middle. You could have folded it, fold it. Yeah. Why you again end me? What you got when you took it in parallel, you simply ah, we can it. still fold. All got the start. Hidden Wheatstone Bridge. Uh... Hmm. Hmm. This is actually a Wheatstone Bridge ka extension. Tha. This is an extended Wheatstone bridge. What is an extended Wheatstone bridge? C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Let's call it C7 and C8. If C1 by C4 is C2 by C5 is C3 by C6, if all the ratio is balanced, C7 and C8 can be removed. All the three ratios should be balanced. So then the circuit simply becomes like this. So what Danya is saying is, if you observe this, this whole thing and this, there are three, right? This, this whole thing and this three, right? So this by this ratio, this ratio, this ratio is equal. Which is same as removing this thing in the middle. But symmetry is better, no? It, you can see it more clearer and faster. But uh, there, there's a concept like this also, an extended bridge front bridge. Is the star clear, everyone? Sir, we could. Okay. Okay. Any doubts on the star? Yeah, yeah, we can fold. If someone wants to do more adventure, we can take this as C and this is D. We can do fine CCD. So if you keep the battery between these two terminals, find the equivalent capacitance with that. That you can do. It will be fun. Here we can't take axial line, but you can take this, na? Perpendicular bisector symmetry. So basically, these nodes will open up like this. So we can't fold. Fold kaise karoge, God? If you fold the battery, A and B ka terminals will cross. No, I mean in the previous. Oh, yeah, okay. Previous case, A and B, you can fold, na? See, Trisha, when you fold, you can't put the battery ka terminals together, right? What is axial symmetry? Go back to again and listen. 
axial symmetry mein line will pass through the terminals perpendicular symmetry mein the line will divide the terminals clear mm. sir can you show that extended wala sir one doubt hmm we are only allowed to remove the nodes that are on the line right the perpendicular line. line yeah <clears throat> sir could you go back to the star ones so then the um, in the triangle the left the utmost triangle the topmost triangle the left and right one hmm then how did we remove those i removed this thing na no? yeah but the, yeah the, what happened that to is, the that is not a node right So then we would have to keep them, right? Where I am saying this and this have same potential, right? Yes, sir. So then this is useless, na? Potential difference is zero. Yes, sir. And uh, so we also remove the other two that are on that triangle. These two are these two can be removed. What else you want to remove? The uh, on the topmost triangle, the same triangle that the uh, one that we want the, to remove yeah, these two. two. Why will you remove, remove them, right? How? Uh, why will you remove them? To remove them, what should happen? We can't remove them, right? Ha! Huh, to remove them, what should happen? Potential difference should be same across them. Across yeah. the capacitor. Yeah, pay it is yeah. one. This is a, na. The potential is not same here. Why will you remove that? Yeah, yeah. All got the star. Next one is more interesting. Cube symmetry. We got a cube. Points are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Find capacitance between C A G, C A B, C A C. If you connect the battery between A and G, between battery between A and B, battery between A and C, three difference. This is another type of symmetry. Like it's symmetry, but there are a lot of cases, different different possibilities. This is a cube symmetry. How will we do this? Try. All the capacitors are C, right? Ah, uh -huh, all C. Listen, I'll help you with one cubes, right? Cube means there's a kind of a symmetry. Actually, if it's cube itself is a symmetry. Now you want to go from A to G, okay? We are doing C A G. So always, right? Whenever you try to find a symmetry, now understand this thing. When you're going from A to G, 
how can you go when you start from a the charge has to go from a to g right so when you go from a to g how will the charge flow it can go from a to b it can go from a to d it can go from a to b and if you observe aren't they all three symmetrical that means if the charge flows it will be q by 3 q by 3 q by 3 no do you agree means for every path that you take through b you can find a similar path through d and you can find a similar path through e is that make sense means if you arrange the alphabets b d e and if you rotate the cube you won't understand who is b and d and d do you agree with that statement so for every path through b we can find a similar path for example if you say i'll go a b c g i will say a d f g a e h g i can find a similar path we can find a similar path through d and e that means point b point d and point e are identical agreed therefore b d e are similar you can use the same argument and say c h f are similar now use nodal analysis so we are combining nodal analysis with symmetry so how many nodes are there a b d e all three are same nodes c h f are same nodes and g even though there are eight points there are actually only four different nodes is this fine everyone now a to b one capacitor a to d one capacitor a to e one capacitor b to c b to h two capacitors two capacitors two capacitors and three capacitors total there should be 12 lines check so this thing will become each one is c okay so this thing becomes simply 3c 6c and 3c so cag will be 6c into 3c by 2 by 6 plus 3 by 2 so that would be 6 into 3 by 6 plus 2 so 15 12 plus 3, 60 by 5. Please check. Ah, huh. we can use Kirchhoff's law, but symmetry is much easier and logical. So if you see C H F are identical, what? For why? Uh, from B D to C H F. What? Is how sixty? Ask properly, re. What you're talking? Ask now. What you're asking? Ask properly, na. Sir, B D is six, 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 six. क्या होता है? क्या ये? Ask properly, na. All I can hear is sir, B D is six, 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 six. Snake, क्या ये वाला? पूछो ना properly. क्या है? Sir, B D is a C H F में वो six C. एक बार आपको समझ. देख सी, 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 सी और नहीं. Check करो. देखो ना clearly. From B to C one, B to H one two na, D to okay. C, D to F two na, E to H and E to F two na. Total six hai na, oh God. Okay. Check everyone. Cube symmetry. Now can you try the other two, C A B and C A C? Try between A to B. If battery is between A and B, how to do? Battery is between A and B. Try. I'll give you a minute. So, won't it be easier if you draw the top view from the cube? Like, can I send you a diagram? Tell the answer now. Solve. Exam. Who will send the diagram? Tell the final answer. Okay. This thing. You did nothing, Ravinda. You just pushed that cube. You know, you just compress the cube. Cube is there, na? My camera is off. Yeah, let's try. Cube is there, na? You just pressed it down. Isn't it? 
You did nothing. Try, try. I thought it was easy. A to B. See, by do by drawing the circuit that way, you didn't reduce any points, right? How many points are there? Eight points are there in your diagram. Also, there are eight points. You didn't reduce them, right? What is the use? If you can reduce the points, your life will become easy. A to B people, that's a good one. Out of all, A to B is the toughest one. Try, I'll give you a minute or two. Now you want to go from where to where? A to B, okay? Now listen carefully, see symmetry, this is how you see. From A to B in how many ways can you go? You can go directly from A to B, or you can go from A to D, or you can go from A to E. So who is symmetrical here? D and D, na? For every path through D, you can find a similar path through E, isn't it? A, D, C, B, A, E, H, B. Are you getting it? Don't say B is symmetrical. B is the other terminal of the battery. So D and D are symmetrical. Similarly, you can also say C and H are symmetrical. Does everyone agree with this? That's it. There are no more symmetrical points. F and H are different. Because to reach F, you need to go A, E, F. But to reach G, you need A, E, F, G. F and G, there's a, they're different. So now put the terminals there. So this is A, then D and D are same. Then you have F, then you have G, then you have C and H, and then you have B. Six different points you have. Between A to D and D to B, there are two capacitors. There are two capacitors. There is one capacitor, two capacitors, two capacitors, one capacitor, one capacitor, and one capacitor. That's the circuit. Total should be 12 capacitors. How much is this? This is 2C, 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 C, C, C by 2, C by 2, 5C by 2, 2C, 2C, C, 5C by 2, C by 7. C, A, B is 12, C by 7. Check how did I draw. Ask me if you're confused, how did I draw this? That is the most important thing. If you got this, then it becomes simply series parallel. A to D, A to B, there are two capacitors. See, remember, simple, there are 12 capacitors here. So you should draw 12 lines here. From D to C, there is one. Uh, D to F, there is one. E to 
D to C, E to H are same. Check out the terminals. It's a good one. Out of all the three, A, B is the tough one. If you got this, try AC. Keep going. This is a cube symmetry. Cubes, me, these are the three possible ways I can ask you. Uh, AG, AB, AC. There is no other possibility. Everything else will be a repeat of this. For AC, is D and B symmetrical? Yes. Right, Trisha? Sir, I sent my working for CAB. I'm getting a different answer. CAB. Oh, I don't understand what you have done. Did you get the same circuit? Check I haven't circuit drawn down. the circuit. Without drawing the circuit, how did you solve God? Either you must have super 3D visualization thing, right? Or I don't know what you're thinking. I'll explain it to you after. You can draw, right? Without drawing, you won't get it. They cook the complex lagre. How the hell did you solve without drawing a circuit? The Avengers may you are a new hero, the 3D visualizer. You can visualize the villain without drawing, and villains die seeing their own diagrams. Super power. <laughs> that is what my bio teacher told me. Arun, I, you know, when I went to my teacher after 10th standard, she, I, I told her, ma'am, I like biology. I like Mike's, Max and biology. Both the subjects are like that. I said, what should I take? She said, Arun, you don't take biology. It doesn't suit you. You're very bad at diagrams. Second thing, you're a very destructive fellow. Biology doesn't work for you. You will always like to go and poke things like, you know, ye ye to kya hoga? in the operation theater, you will feel like, Are, let's, let's leave this artery and cut that artery and see kya hoga. So said, it doesn't work for you. You're not, you know, you're a very bad doctor. I said, Thi hai. then I said, let's do IID. CAC everyone. AC is actually pretty nice. If you observe, can you guys observe this? There is a plane of symmetry. That's a bisector symmetry, no? That entire middle plane is a symmetrical plane. Therefore, B, D, H, F have same potential. There is a midpoint. You can remove anything between them. Your whole circuit becomes like this. This is easy to solve, right? You can remove these two guys. This is HF, this is BD. You can remove the BH and DF ka things. So this will be C, C. And C, that would be C by 3, 4 C by 3. Check. 10 C by 9. How the hell did we get 10 C by 9? 
Did you get the same thing? Ah, Anamma, you got it right. Check everyone. All clear with this? This is a cube symmetry. Clear? Make sure to try this again, it's a good one. Then we have one more symmetry. An infinite grid. This is what I was saying, huh? all these questions exactly will come in current electricity. Idea is the same. Only series parallel formulas will reverse. So there we can avoid these things. There we will do some other weird ones. And in case you're wondering how does it look, I'll just give you an example. Ta -da, something like this. This is called a monster grid. That, that looks scary, but it is actually easy to solve. So what is this infinite grid? Sir, you showed that was infinite. No, that is a more, that is not an infinite grid. This is infinity. It is going till infinity. Each segment is a capacitor. This circuit is never ending, basically. Now, Kavish, everything clear so far, circuits? Yes. Great. Ask me, clear, no, everything? Yes, sir. Great. Labdi? Clear, no, Labdi? Gauri? Great. So there, so there are infinite capacitors here. There are two terminals here. This is A and this is B. This is an infinite grid. The circuit never ends. It just keeps on going till infinity. Find CAB. Now for this, there's a technique to solve. You can't figure out directly, but think about it for a minute. Then I'll show you what to do here. We use a different technique called superposition. I think PESCA major test is going on now. PESCA M duties. Unit tests are going on next week. HSCA. Chala, I'll keep it light only for this week, even now all the other batches are crying. We'll just do capacitors only. Next week, that will be light only. You'll be able to handle it. Now, what is the concept involved in infinite grids? Listen, we have something called principle of superposition. What this concept says now, this actually we have used it without you know knowing what it is multiple times. If you have two independent events, one and two create effects one and two. When both the events happen at the same time, We get effect one plus two. I mean, simple example. Let's say you apply force F1, you get acceleration A1. 
If you apply force F2, you get acceleration A2. If you apply both the forces at the same time, you get acceleration A1 plus A2. Make sense? If there are two independent events and both of them act at the same time, the net effect will be one plus two. And if you see this thing, this we have done even in projectile no, no, motion. Also no, awesome motion projectile, what did you do? You treated vertical motion as independent and you treated horizontal motion independently. You studied them, both of them separately, and then you added X and Y coordinates from here. Making sense? Now, how can you apply this for circuits? Example, let's say if you have multiple batteries, let's say this is battery V1, this is battery V2, this is C1 and C2 and C3. So what this thing says is, suppose if only battery V1 exists, if only V1 exists, and let's say in this process, you get a charge Q and let's say this is flowing from Q1. Plus, let's say only V2 exists. And let's say because of this, some charge Q dash and let's say this is Q2 is flowing. If both of them are there together, so only V2. If both of them there together, this charge should be Q1 plus Q2. You're getting the idea? This is called principal superposition. If only battery one is there, let's say you get charge Q1. If battery two is there, if you get charge Q2, if both the batteries are there, you'll get charge Q1 plus Q2. So if there are so two batteries are two independent events. So if there are n batteries and they do n different charges, then resultant would be this thing. So, but then what about charges Q and Q dash? They can be different. So we have to calculate them separately. Q and Q dash won't be same. No? There's no guarantee they have to be same. Clear? Are you getting the meaning of principal superposition? So, so how gosh, oh yeah. Sir, in the that folding mala method, sir, after folding once, if we get symmetry again, can we fold it? Are, 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 what are we talking about? What are you asking? Is it related to this or you know, want to ask something else? No, the previous one. I'm... Then don't ask. No, ask end of the class. No, that thing got over long back. Folding previous one, nahi, I'll punch you. Previous one was cube. In that three cases we did. Uh -huh. Out of and then uske pehle star bhi kiya tha. Then suddenly you remembered something else. Don't suddenly ask something else. I was thinking, how do you fold these batteries here? Don't confuse everyone. You have some doubt, wait till the end of the class and ask. Ask something relevant, na? Currently, jo kar rahe. And problem wo bhi nahi hai, Shavriya. You should say, sir, in the question that we are folding, what happens? There? Nah, you start like this. Sir, in the folding thing. I said, like, bloody, where are we folding here? You are an expert in scaring teachers and confusing teachers. You come next Sunday, I'll punch you. I'll tell your seniors to rag you. This guy is the one who teases me a lot. And you should see each one. I actually, I'm really little eager to see you all. Because when I saw your seniors, I'm really shocked. Half of the class is taller than me. In the screen, everyone looks so small, na? so I was expecting small, small kids. So when I saw them, I was thinking, all are so tall. Let's see how tall you all are. Uh, now, the infinite grid, listen. So the idea here is what? There are two terminals here, A and B. So this is what we will do. So let's assume only A is there. So if you send a charge Q through A, what will happen? By symmetry, you get Q by four, Q by four, Q by four, and Q by four. So if only A is present, assume Q enters through A,
and goes to infinity. And because of symmetry, it spreads. Agreed? So if you have an only A, charge will be this thing. Plus, suppose if only B is there. And let's say you pull Q charge out of B. Now what will happen? Because by symmetry, you get Q by four, Q by four, Q by four, and Q by four. Now, if you combine both of them, now look at the idea here. Means if you do both at the same time, that means if you push charge Q through A, you get Q by four in this branch. If you pull Q from here, we get Q by four in this branch, agreed? So in these two terminals, A and B, that means in the capacitor, which is joining A and B, how much charge is flowing? Q by two, right? Q by two. So we get Q by Two is equal to capacitance into potential difference VA minus VB. What is the capacitance of the system? Charge by potential difference is C equivalent, which is nothing but 2C. So this whole grid graph answer is 2C. Again, listen to this logic, what we did. I can't solve. If you send a charge through A and B at the same time, I have no clue what to do. But if I send only charge through A by symmetry, shouldn't the charge go to infinity? So it will take a symmetrical path. Every line will go Q by 4, Q by 4, Q by 4. Similarly, if I take Q charge outside, Q by 4, Q by 4 will come. Means if I do both of them together, that line joining A and B will have Q by 4, Q by 4, Q by 2. Na? So the charge on the capacitor between A and B will have Q by 2 charge. Q is equal to CB. So Q by two is equal to C into VA minus VB. The C equivalent is defined as charge by potential difference. Q by VA minus VB, which is 2C. Please check. Is this clear everyone? Please check, it's a good one. This is an infinite grid. Clear? I'll give as a homework, you can try this. Infinity, infinity critical triangle. All are C. The circuit is becoming smaller, 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 smaller to infinity. Find CAV. So try this as a homework. So with that, we have finished the metrical circuit. So symmetry may you see the how many are there different different ones. So next class when you meet on Wednesday, we are going to do Kirchhoff's law. So what if nothing works? So we have the final method, Kirchhoff's law. That will always work. Uh, but the problem is what? It is brute force solving actually. There's nothing really much to think about it. 
it's kind of boring, but it's an important thing. So we will be doing it. For next class, when we will do Kirchhoff's law, and we will do some kind of circuits on that and all that stuff. And then the last thing left is, you know, this thing, uh, dielectrics labs and everything that will wrap up on Saturday. So next week we'll finish off this. So I know you have UT also and backlog also. So try to finish it off. So capacitors, in case someone wants to do HCV, uh, you can uh, you can do first 30, 35, 39. You can do 40 questions. First 40 questions you can do. HCV total has around 68. You'll be able to handle first 40 questions, those who want to do HCV. BC point and I have to see each one, right? Harsh. Take clear the circuits and all, you know. <laughs> okay, so with that, we'll wrap up for the day. So any doubts, anything, please stay back and ask. I'll be free to leave. I'll see you on Wednesday, same time, 8.45. So, yeah.